All right, guys, we're back to screencast 6-2 subsystems, excuse me, as I stumble on my words, systems substitution. We found in the last couple of days in class that we could graph two lines, that's a system, more than one line, and where they would intersect would be the solution. Now, we also had lines that did not intersect and they didn't have solutions. We also had lines that um, were graphed, they were the same line, and so they had infinite solutions. So this is just the second way of learning how to solve systems. So we're going to start with just a basic system. Um, let's go with y equals 4x minus 6. And then, oh, there's the bell recording this morning. Oh, and there's the phone. Let me pause. I'll be back in a moment. Okay. So now we're back. We've got y equals 4x minus 6, and we've got 5x plus 3y equals negative 1. We know there's two things we're going to have to solve for. We're going to have to solve for a y, and we're going to have to solve for an x. If you look at this equation, it tells us that y equals 4x minus 6. So I'm going to go to my second equation, and everywhere I see a y, I'm going to substitute 4x minus 6. So I'm going to have 5x plus 3, and that's 3 times y, so we're going to do parentheses, 4x minus 6, and then put that equal to negative 1. Again, I just substituted 4x minus 6 for this y over here. Now we've got like terms, so we're going to have 5x, we're going to do the distributive property, so that's going to give me plus 12x, and then positive 3 times negative 6 is negative 18, equals negative 1. Let me scroll this down a little bit. Put those x's together, 5x and 12x is 17x minus 18 equals negative 1. And then how do I get rid of that minus 18? I'm going to add 18 to both sides. That will cancel. So I'm left with 17x equals, and what's negative 1 plus 18? And that's going to be 17 divide by 17 and x equals 1. Okay, so now we're halfway there. We know what x is. So I'm going to go back to one of my original equations and I'm going to take the y equals 4x minus 6. And I'm going to plug in that 1 everywhere I see an x. So that's going to be y equals 4 times 1 minus 6. 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 minus 6 is going to be negative 2. Okay, so x is 1, y is negative 2. Now let's go over here. That's going to be a coordinate, so I always put my 1 first. Or excuse me, I always put my x first and my y second. So if I graph those two lines, they would intersect at 1, negative 2. And that would be your solution. OK. A lot of stuff we could do here. Um, what I want to do is just do the same method that we've been doing. This says y is 2x minus 3. So on the left-hand side, everywhere I see a y, I'm going to put 2x minus 3. So we're going to start off with the 2x minus, and now I'm going to substitute in for that y, 2x minus 3. Again, I'm going from the first equation. I substitute that 2x minus 3 in there, and I make that 8. Now, the negative sign out in front of the parentheses changes the signs of everything in there. So that's going to be minus 2x plus 3. Now, something very interesting happens here. The x's cancel, and I'm left with 3 
equals 8. Now, just like our equations from weeks ago, when our x's cancel out and I'm left with a number that doesn't equal the other number, this, these are obviously going to be no solution. And there's one reason why there's no solution. Because these lines have the same slope and they would be parallel. So they will never touch. So that's a no solution. Now, our final example is going to need a little bit more work. They didn't tell us exactly what y equals. Um, so in this case, we're going to have to substitute. Um, I like the right side because they're all even numbers. On the left side, we've got a 4, a 3, and a 1. We've got evens and odds. I'm going to take the right side, and I'm going to put it in y equals mx plus b form, which means I've got to get y by itself. So I'm going to add the 8x. That's going to give me 6y, those cancel, equals 8x minus minus 2. I'm going to divide both sides by 6. That's going to give me y equals, now 6 doesn't go into 8, but we're just going to reduce that as far as we can. So that's going to be 4 thirds x, and then 2 over 6 is going to be 1 third. Now, we are going to have to use fractions on this one, okay, so please bear with me. But here we go. We're going to go back to the first equation, and everywhere I see y, I'm going to substitute in 4 thirds x minus 1 third. I think you will uh, be pleasantly surprised. There's not a whole lot of work with fractions on this one. So we're going to have 4x minus 3, and now I substitute in my y value, 4 thirds x. minus one third and then that's going to equal one again substituting in the value so this is 4x now I'm taking negative three and I'm going to go over here where I've got yeah I'll go down where I've got a little bit of space I'm taking negative three times four thirds the threes will cancel and so that's negative 1 times 4. That's just going to be negative 4. X. And then I have negative 3 times negative 1 third. I'm going to do parentheses here. Stop that. Stop. There we go. That's a mess. Negative times negative is going to be positive. Those cancel out. So that's going to be positive 1. Again, like the one before, our 4x is canceled. But in this case, 1 does equal 1. So what we have just graphed is the exact same line, which means that we have infinite solutions. Okay, so we did graphing the last couple of days. We're going to do substitution today, and um, we're going to do some elimination next week. Um, and then you'll have three different ways to solve these problems, and you can pick the one that works the best for you. Not everyone will choose the same one. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.